call the meeting to order at 5.31. Uh, I want to welcome you all to the Council on Aging meeting. Um, welcome to the TV audience. And um, why don't we go around starting with my left, Ms. Lucille. Hi, I'm Lucille. Say who you are. Chino, and I'm a member of the board. Hi, I'm Dale Taylor, board member. Joan Powers, uh, South Health who serves the place on. Janice Desmond, board member. Arthur Needy, board member. Jim Holden, transportation coordinator. Council on Aging. Leslie James, board member. Betty Johnson, Friends of Citrus Seniors liaison. Elaine Chimbari, uh, Commissioner of Disabilities liaison. Linda Hayes, director of the Council on Aging Senior Center. And Gordon Price, vice chair, standing in for J.D. Miller tonight. So thank you all for coming. Um, I know Linda sent out minutes uh, a few days ago. Has everyone had a chance to read them or uh, scan them like real quick book. or, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Janice is very uh, detailed is in, very in, her, thorough. in her meeting minutes, which is great. That meeting was also very long. It was, but, but yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that, you know. No, it's I seven o'clock, our normal time, we finished, wow. I think. Yes. Anyhow. Um, I thought there was one question I had. I can't remember where it was. Mm. Okay. Okay. Everyone ready to move forward with a motion to accept the minutes? I haven't finished reading. I need another one. Okay. I did actually make one correction before I sent them out, and that was that she had indicated the meeting was adjourned at 7.56, and I kept thinking, I know it was long, but I don't think it was 8 o'clock. <laughs> so I took the liberty of making that change already. Yeah. So it was 6.56? It was. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it just felt like 7.56 maybe to Janice? I don't know. Very pleasant. How are we doing? I'm all set. Are we ready? I'm all right. everybody's ready. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll turn the meeting over to Linda for a bit and have her give her reports. Okay. And her staff as well. <laughs> okay, hello everybody. Um, I know we are missing three members tonight, but we have six. Still have a quorum today. Um, so, uh, it, it seems like I may have already reported this, but I don't think I did, that I actually, we actually did get approved by the Situate Education Foundation for that grant. <laughs> so I may have mentioned that I submitted at the last meeting and in fact then got word that we got it. <laughs> great, great. So, um, I don't know in the scheme of things, in terms of you know, the money, it's $3,000 um, to purchase a number of iPads and covers for the iPads and then um, on the heels of our aging mastery program so I sort of worked it into that so a couple of you had taken that for the 10 weeks and then they would be eligible to continue for this seniors connect idea where they would receive you know formal training in the iPad but then also be matched with one of the interact club students at the high school for and I mean matched for ongoing one-on-one -on -one support mm -hmm. where they could be helped to customize and learn what resources are, are available for their individual needs, some of them being maybe health-related and, and just certain things that could well, help them to achieve the things that they had been hoping to do through Aging Mastery and then, and then some. So um, I think I had it, now I can't remember how many weeks I had it as going, but um, they wouldn't keep the iPads ultimately, so we wouldn't have to do it again, but we could go through with the training and support continuously after that, after sort of a pilot. So that's great. Mm -hmm. So it really won't happen. Aging Mastery begins in September through 
beginning of December, <coughs> and then it would be like December through March, I might have said. So if anyone hasn't taken Aging Mastery, and they might like to, this would be good. So we'll talk about that next time. Um, as I, I believe everyone is aware, the feasibility study uh, will be presented um, on July 11th to the Board of Selectmen, but the location is actually to be determined or being discussed. I know it went out as being at the <coughs> EOC, the new safety complex, but I'm not sure that How they're doing that. Time? I don't know that yet either. Um, but it, it will happen. I happen to be on vacation that week, so I... I'm thinking I might get to know what's going on beforehand. Um, also, Linda, yeah. Linda, do you know if the Board of Selectmen are going to have um, a presentation at a board meeting prior to the, that July 11th or, or not? I would think that they would want to be at kind a of aware board of meet At a different board meeting? Not their own? Yeah. You mean no, here? At, like No, at their own board at their meeting. their own board meeting. I think that prior, is what prior. July 11th is. The July I know it's, 11th. On, a, it's oh. on a Tuesday, so... Yes. It is their but board. I was selection. wondering if they would get if there was going to be a presentation directly mm -hmm. to the board. Oh, like without, if, without that, the if that's being considered yeah. to be a board meeting, okay. I think it is, and I, yeah. that's what I believe they're doing. Oh, okay. And then I asked, oh well, do you think maybe I could be aware of what was happening beforehand since I am away? Yeah. But we'll see. So uh, I'll you are going to be away for the eleventh. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm well sure be, I didn't have a choice. We'll have good representation, I'm sure. So, and also John Danahy was <coughs> elected, some of you may watch the Board of Selectmen's meetings, but John Danahy is our new liaison, oh. um, but I only learned that today through a memo, so um, I didn't expect him here tonight, only because I was told it would really happen for July, the new fiscal year, but anyway, that is the news. Uh, transportation news, um, our new part-time driver, Jim Keeley, gosh, he's had to jump through so many hoops, I can't believe he is still working with us. <laughs> <laughs> but we think he's done, perhaps, and he is uh, able to drive, and he's passed everything, God love him. And um, right now he's driving on Mondays as well as special trips for us. Um, I had taken him to Taunton for some orientation and to get a vehicle, because we'd been without our 14-person van for some time, which had to have extensive repairs. So, um, and I had a meeting with Frank, so it was worth my while to go there. Then Jim had to stay for a while more, and then he had to go back another day for eight hours worth of training. Um, but then we received our new 14-person van, which we currently have. Uh, and both Jim and Mary are trained and certified to drive that one, uh, which is great. So, and I, and I, I think it's great. I think we're, we're hoping that we'll keep this one for a bit and that it will serve our purposes. Um, I also did attend the Gatcher Advisory meeting in Norton, which is a long way to go for that, but. Uh, 28 communities potentially do attend and they're led by it's the mayor of Taunton um, I think is their chairperson currently but usually it's just Frank's reporting on what's going on among the different communities and actually they're very happy with Situate's um, use of the sloop and that actually does gain some, we have gained some momentum there uh, seniorities the last segment was taped uh, May 12th with Laura Minier of Social Services. That was our fifth episode. Episode sounds like a soap opera. Um, but because of the change or transition at SCTV, um, I haven't talked with Brianna about scheduling our next segment, which would be with Lisa, um, on programs. And then we'd also do something about volunteers. So we still have a couple planned and then would continue subsequently, but I just don't know when. So we'll talk to Brianna about that. Uh, my new formula grant budget is coming up. Um, I start it in July and it's due um, beginning of August. So even, but if I have previously approved funds, I can continue to spend them. So just on the heels of the budget talk last month, just in terms of salary, for instance, or, it, or exercise, if I'm using funds to pay for that, I just do continue to do that if I know I'm going to reuse them for the next cycle. Approximately, Linda, what's the dollar value of that? It's unchanged from last year, so it's 43300 uh, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. believe was the, okay. and that's based on the 2010 census mm -hmm. of 16 over. Even though there's more, but then they went up, you know, from 7 to 8 to 9 to 10 dollars yeah. per elder last year, and it's, sta it's staying that way this year. Okay. Linda, was it 60 and over? Is that what the Census counts? I think so. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, 
Uh, just general, there's just some bullet items there, but uh, we did have a meeting with uh, Social Elder Services Program Planner Donna Shakrala, who had come to one of our meetings, mm -hmm. so she checks in about the MAP grant, the medical access program that we do utilize funds for, um, and then she did explain a couple of grants that were available coming up, and I did end up going to a bidders conference there <coughs> to learn about the guidelines and procedures. I started to write it, but I decided that it was it was a lot for a little, and I just didn't really have an appropriate program right now and the staff to support it, so I just decided to wait for the next round on that one. Um, but I've had several meetings. It's been a busy month, of course, and we've been planning the volunteer celebration, which I hope everybody can attend. Mm -hmm. um, that would be nice. We did decide to shake things up a little. <laughs> Um, so instead of lunch, it's four o'clock for a little more mingling mixer. Um, I love the invitation. Oh, nice. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Very nice. Very well, well done. We yeah. put our heads together, but I will give Lisa all the credit for actually. Can I have a stupid question? Yes. Where is the Maritime Center? The Situate Maritime. If you haven't been, <laughs> then I'm glad we're doing it. Well, we it's have. over there. Yeah, it's across the water. <laughs> the old across boat the water. Yeah. Yeah. James. Parking's a little tricky. Yeah. The old first no. boat, yeah. first. Not second. It's first and second. First. first. It's yeah. that's way down. It's down. Yeah. You're going to be very pleasantly surprised. Oh, good. It's well, beautiful. it's the best. Well, the best view in town. Place. One of them. Yeah. Yeah. But the only difficult thing about it is there is no kitchen. So we have to, you know, we bring yeah. food in, catered, set it up, you know, on tables or whatever, and serve. Um, but it's worth it. It's very nice. It's a very nice building. It's so. a very wonderful view and everything. So very we'll have nice. some entertainment and food. We'll pray for sun. Pray for sun. It's always good. Um, what else do I have? So I did attend the Interact Club meeting, the last one for their year, to thank the seniors who are leaving and inform them of the grant I had submitted with them in mind. And so they were excited to be part of that as well. Um, and also participate in Tech Time when they come. And we do have one more Tech Time we weren't going to do June, but we are. So they're scheduled to come next Wednesday. And I actually was going to send out a broadcast call to people who've done it before but really it is great if you have any questions whatsoever I actually was pulled over to the side of the road trying to find something and you know settings general how the heck do you do this and I mean all we have to do is ask them and they they love mm. to answer those questions and most of the time they do know the answers so they're great so um, next Wednesday at three o'clock for an hour plenty of kids to go around um, I had a division meeting uh, with the town administrator, which she does try to do maybe quarterly, and I was partnered with the health department, the veterans agent, and social services, of course, Laura, who is part of the Council on Aging as well. Uh, attended the hoarding response team meeting as well, and a SANS meeting, and was asked to write a letter of support for an award that they're being recommended for, so I did do that to lead Tai Chi Weekly, and it has really um, grown so that people don't necessarily leave or stop attending, but each eight weeks I can take on new people, so five people started in this most recent eight-week um, segment, I guess I would call it, so um, you'll have it through the summer. happy to have them. You know, continuously, because it's 24 weeks, you know, inevitably we miss one or two, and in July we'll miss two because of the fourth, and then I am out. So um, I hate to not continue with it because it is only once a week and it is valuable. I did visit the Hanover COA just um, because I hadn't been there and, and they've been there for five years or so with their new senior center. So I was curious how, um, how that was and had a tour and talked with their director who was retiring. So it was valuable, I think, to go over there. It is small, but it was well done. It is very remote, um, which ordinarily I, I, I'm not in favor of. Um, mm -hmm. I like visibility. But um, hard to find it. Hard to find it, and that's where they had the land. And again, you take sometimes what what is presented, or you know. But they've worked well with it, and um, it's very. Is it out very to nice. what's called West Hanover? Is it? You know, could be because it did take a while. It's <laughs> off of Broadway, or okay, on, yeah. On I think it's West off Hanover. Of Broadway, and yeah. then cent Central. Anyway, yeah, it was pretty far in. But it is lovely, and they make do. And um, when it, like for instance, they don't have a fitness room. Yeah, which would be important, extremely important, mm -hmm. but they have their large multi-purpose room and they divide it, they can divide it twice into three segments. Mm -hmm. And she even, it's not ideal, it's not ideal, but that is one of the concessions they had to make, that's what they did. What was the concession? 
No fitness room. And I don't mean with equipment, but even just a proper room with flooring that you can have your succession of exercise classes in. And, and they have to use the multi-purpose room where they also serve lunch mm -hmm. sometimes and have, you know, other things going on. So, um, but still, I was impressed. It was, yeah. it was, so was very nice. was the concession nice. to the budgetary? Sure. Yeah. They, did, they did have theirs built as a result of what was um, being built for the high school as well at that time. Just like Plymouth. Plymouth did the same thing. Is it a standalone? Yes. Standalone, very alone. <laughs> Actually, just saying. Because, <laughs> yeah, there's, it's a long driveway. It's a good sign, but it's a long driveway and it is kind of pretty. It's very nice. You could do a lot more with it, too, in terms of the outdoor space, I think, oh, you know, ultimately, nice. if they could. But, um, Before you go on mm -hmm. that next section, a question on one of your bullet points. Mm -hmm. It says, met with union representatives oh. regarding requests to change right. summer hours. What's that, right. what's that about? So in order, we, it was the last thing on the, I think I mentioned it last time, but we just wanted to change the hours for the senior center from 8.30 to 4.30 to 8 a.m. to 4 because we're, transportation's having to come in early to mm -hmm. get messages and, you know, oh. just to get things going. And it just seemed like maybe we should try the half hour earlier. It made some sense. Not as much goes on late in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, because we have unions, mm. I had to meet with the uh -huh. unions of the staff affected by the change. Yeah. And so, and how did that? Work? How did that? Yeah, work? it worked. <laughs> oh yeah, it was. They're agreeable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. As long as the staff was, the, you know, as long as they just had to ask or meet with the staff to make sure they uh, wanted to do it. Okay. And they did. So right now, it's only for the two months, July and August. But we can revisit it in September, and if we want to keep it, we can. It's, you know, hmm. it okay. seems silly, not significant, but mm. no, could be nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Although, when I first started, and I was trying to schedule some things, um, like the cafe talks, for 9 in the morning, I was actually told that was too early. <laughs> yeah. So, and we changed them to 10, and then 10.30, so I, I don't know. Um, but we'll see. It is sort of nice to get things going in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially this time. Yeah, they were up, but some of them had told me at the time it takes them a while to, you know, they, some of them have health issues. Sure. They, they told me at the time, 9 o'clock, I can't. Get my self. I'm up, but they have mm -hmm. health issues that have to contend with mm -hmm. them getting dressed. So. Sure. Okay. So um, the harbor building supplemental use has begun just this week for the month of June um, for our exercise classes primarily, which had been at St. Luke's. The contract with that uh, venue ended, and we have um, five yoga classes that are going on there well actually not quite so Mondays we have Monday going on at the Maritime Center just through June 19th and then they're moving into the community building uh, we have that balance class which you know has numbers as I think some of you know or attend up to 20 23 people I think she had uh, last on Monday who instructs that her name is Sue Ribeiro and she's really wonderful she really came to us but she's a mm -hmm. great asset um, what is that the year 44 Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's not, it, it wasn't what I want to say. They would have liked it if we didn't need it yet, but I'm not sure what they thought we were going to do. So he, he you know, facilities is still working on some aspects. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to it being empty so they could continue some of the work like the roof. But we need it so we're um, working out that we can be there, but maybe in a confined space if it's noisy or we'll see. So um, it'll be maybe a tougher month. But he was very good about emptying it as quickly as they could, and the library also was great about doing what they could. Um, however, Zumba, that said, Zumba needs different space, a different floor, can't be on a carpet, so I think we figured it out for six weeks, and after that we need divine intervention, or we may suspend it for the summer, or maybe it will be able to continue where it is, but we'll see about six that. Six weeks there? Um, Six weeks I think right now we've left it at St. Luke's, oh, Luke's. Um, with something of his blessing, and then we could go to Gates very briefly, and then we don't, and then yeah, then we don't know. Uh -huh. um, Do you have a good memory. Do you know what day? Where you it's going? hard. <laughs> um, oh, the calendar. <laughs> well, we have several calendars. Um, so we are. Uh, we will be coordinating use of the building through the summer, at least, if I, I don't know, um, with the Recreation Department as well. So, just saying, it's not solely ours to make use of, but right now it's not a problem and we'll, you know. Is it not likely that both groups would be having activity there at the same time? 
Um, no, it, no. If I'm we unlikely. wanted to be able to, you know, we could mm. if 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 the activities were um, compatible. With exactly. Yeah. So we are trying to do that on Fridays. That's that's the pickleball story. But um, I'm actually going to visit with recreation tomorrow just to see if they think it will work because if it won't then we won't do that so you know we'll see uh -huh. but we're just trying to coordinate and it is you know there are three sort of spaces and actually maybe four um, but the fourth is the newest space that they built out for the library you know they built sort of office space mm -hmm. in the front of the building with a door access you know from mm -hmm. the outside um, but it's small, unfortunately, and most of our classes yeah, might not fit. Mm -hmm. It's an ideal maybe yoga room, but it's still, we have more people than would fit in there. Mm -hmm. So that's why use of Jenkins on Friday mornings became uncertain just this week, but we'll see. And if that doesn't work out, which we thought we had scheduled for Friday mornings, I was able, and this was never available before, but there's just been changes all the time, so I'm glad I checked. But the high school gym is available at 3.30 in the afternoon. So right now we have it on Wednesdays for sure, 3.30 yeah. to 6. I mean, it's like, I don't, mm -hmm. and there's even two gyms, but we only have four nets. So we can, <laughs> we can easily use one gym. We're waiting to hear if maybe there is some equipment we could use at the high school, in which case we could expand into the other gym. Anyway, if Jenkins doesn't work out, we can also have Mondays at the high school. So. Mm -hmm. Still a little bit in flux, but we have till July, I mean, sorry, yeah, July 1, to figure it all out. Um, I, I think I am going to ask for a one-time small fee for participation for the summer for those who are um, participating now, and then in September if people are starting new at that time. Just a one-time annual type $10, mm -hmm. just to maybe start to have uh, a resource for equipment purchases or mm -hmm. future needs that we, we don't foresee yet, but it's a gaining momentum, we might as well um, mm -hmm. have them, you know, make an investment to it. Yeah. And then... Um, I don't think anyone would object to that. No, I don't think so either. Everybody's happy, I know. Yeah. So, May programs that, that I attended well, and that were... Did I mention great. something yep. about pickleball? And there were, I think there were 28 people, I think, mm -hmm. there yeah. last night, so quite a, quite a crowd. Um, I had had a couple discussions with Tom Edwards about safety eyewear. And I, mm -hmm. Tom does wear safety eyewear. Mm -hmm. I should know better. I don't. <laughs> um, but uh, a couple people have like been blasty. hit uh, yeah. in the eye or yeah. near the eye. Fortunately, no injuries. Fortunately, a, a pickleball is large enough that if it's going to hit you, it's probably not going to hit your eye. It'll hit your bony socket, yeah. unlike a golf ball or mm -hmm. yeah. something like that. But Tom, yeah. my understanding as of last night, did purchase. 24 did, safety eyewear. And we'll be purchasing them ourselves so that it won't, there won't be a liability issue. Like Tom will have them, and I think they're going to be yeah. $2 each or something, and yeah. we can purchase them from him. And my thought is I think it needs to be mandatory. Um, Some people will object, but, mm. you know, I don't know if we can make it mandatory or not, but, you know, you know I think we should at least, at least strongly urge people to, yeah. uh, to wear them. Um, well, where they have to sign a waiver? You know, mm. uh, here's, well, I've seen now a little bit of, you know, we've separated. We have those who are playing at a, a slightly higher yeah. level where perhaps that is more of a concern and those learning and maybe mm. playing at a moderate level. It's mm -hmm. never been a concern. Wasn't a concern, mm. I would say, mm. having been there and played. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that would be the recommendation. You know, if you're going to really uh -huh. be in a position where you become vulnerable playing at a faster pace yeah. or you know some harder mm -hmm. hits, that could work. It's it's I, I appreciate. You know, I, mean, I, your, I, I mean, I don't yeah. know what the liability is to the town now if somebody were to be injured was, playing. Yeah, if somebody have got hurt badly, even their yeah, bone. Some um, would say, "Well, why so weren't they?" Wear something, wear I they, think you know, what that you. means is we write up uh, an additional release. I mean, it's sort of, I don't mean to say it's a given. We have releases. We could have asked someone to sign to be involved in an activity. That means they release all liability to the town because they're, they've are they checked with their doctor. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they have under their own, you know, decision-making power have decided mm -hmm. they can participate. Mm -hmm. um, but we could also say recommendations are, you know, this, and they sign that. That would mm -hmm. be fine. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. So we could do that, yeah. Preventative medicine. You okay with that, Betty? You come, Betty? I mean, you've been more involved longer than I have. You, you think I don't that's like the idea of them being mandatory. Yeah. I, I just think that that's that's kind of 
violation. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I don't want them to be mandatory. I think we've recommended them. We already have that on But the release too. puts the onus on the them. It's not yeah. mandatory. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. The release fine. We and I mean, fall. Fall. we what? We've had people fall. Yeah. Sure. Oh, sure. My wife. <laughs> Last night. She did? Last night? Yeah. Yeah. She was fine. Well, I mean, you know, accidents happen. Of yeah. But I, I just don't want to see the so time I suppose on, the, on the hook for any liability that yeah. you know, yeah. could possibly be. You know, be, to think. Uh, right. I mean, it's only common sense. It is common yeah. sense. And, and you know, not, there's enough, I'm sure there are enough lawsuits going on right now up at Town Hall where they yeah. don't need any more. Yeah, but if this, as Linda just described, if this if waiver, there is, if you yeah. want to call it that, so you know, it clarifies things, and I yeah. think that would be the way to go. And I hate to say, we've taken for granted that someone inherent in all the activities we we promote here is that they, we are protected because they are choosing to hmm. participate, but mm -hmm. the release doesn't hurt. And I need to think, I think I did it for Tai Chi, which is a, a bit more slow moving uh -huh. <laughs> than some of the other things we do. <laughs> but still, we did do it. So okay. um, it's no problem there. I have it. Okay, so I mentioned change of hours, and then just, you know, the Mother's Day brunch we had in, um, in May. Uh, some of you might have even been there, and it was really nice. It was, it was a great success. It was great. Happy to have done it and been part of it, and we wanted to thank Christine Zaremba, who some people may know. She's a poet and just a very creative person and a writer, and she came in and, and read stories and poems that she had written, sort of mm. some relating to mothers, some not, and then we did some videos that were... <laughs> Anybody here who was here? Right, Audrey. Yeah. And the food was was great. Yeah. And I it. I yeah, which we, <laughs> we can now. But anyway, that was wonderful. And then um, Herb Crehan, who I know I'd spoken about coming and the baseball author, and he was really delightful, brought at least twenty books and sold every one of them. We were mm. gonna send him back oh, out to the car. <laughs> see if he had some more. That's great. So it was really nice. Was Stayed great. afterwards. We even got rid of some hot dogs. So um, mm -hmm. no, it was a great it was a great day. Um, we are planning, as you know, the volunteer celebration. July 4th, we're doing the luncheon on Friday, June 30th, here in the backyard, <laughs> a.k.a. parking lot. <laughs> um, are we going to have music? Yes. Same as last year. <laughs> Hopefully you like it. Um, I, what time it, is that? It is at noon on Friday. 16 people that come to our meals on wheels. Well, let's try to hopefully do an off-site visit. Um, because they here. have to order the meals ahead of time. I'll and talk with Sue. On Friday at noon time, they can't come. I'll talk with Sue. Well, they they can if they want to. And well, because they're committed to. Okay, I'll talk with Sue. It's yeah, that's okay. the day we have to do it, John. And Thursday we can't do it because there's the congregational luncheon. Yeah. So we're gonna do it, and they are welcome. And I will talk to Sue about maybe being able to combine. The resources, if oh, she would okay. like to bring them over. Are you going to have a bonus <coughs> ice cream truck? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big hit. Um, yeah, it's great. I, I actually wish the food trucks are such a new trend these days that we're trying to figure that out. But no, I think we're doing the barbecue we did last year, which was um, we picked it up. But maybe they do delivery now. I don't know. Um, First Memory Cafe. I'm trying to plan for July and. Um, just I know I'd mentioned it and we had some money from Harvard Pilgrim, that's how I wanted to use it, just to do some entertainment or activity, um, refreshments, that sort of thing. So don't know if we'll do it every month or every other month. We'll just get one under our belts and see how it goes. But it is for both the, the client afflicted and also, I don't like that word, but, um, and the caregiver to attend together and have you know, some sort of activity or just mingling, um, just a social time for an hour and a half or, or two. So I think I will try having a, a music bingo as the activity for the first one and see how that goes, because it's supposed to be fun. Um, I picked the day, because it's just hard to know, and maybe a Tuesday, because that is a sort of a free day for us. Uh, we are going to plan a lobster lunch, which right now I'm thinking about sort of a kickoff prior to the Heritage Days weekend. And um, part of that is because I'd love to come up with a giveaway. If anybody has ideas, I listed a couple, but originally I wanted a hat or a t-shirt, but you know those rubber bracelets everybody gets, that mm -hmm. might be easy ah. for a start with a certain color or mm -hmm. something, so that then everybody's walking around <coughs> Heritage Days with something. Or we could give it out there too, but um, we'd like to do the lobster lunch again. We did it not last summer because we kind of forgot, 
but the <laughs> summer before, and it was really fun and successful. So um, we'll do that again. Say yes to a senior and then say yeah, something like that, or you know, the Facebook like or love your senior center, but then say yes to a senior center. Very yeah, good. Yeah. So just mm -hmm. just the beginnings of trying to have some sort of campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we care. Um, so that is my own report. Um, and then Lisa's is next uh, regarding activities, some of which I mentioned, but we did have a couple of good men's breakfasts. Uh, Joby Norton spoke uh, in May, and then Patrick O'Connor was just this week, which was very nice, I think, and I'm glad that he had attendance and, and they were interested. Um, also May 31st, and I missed it because I was elsewhere, but we did have um, a man come regarding hearing loss, but also assistive <coughs> technologies, and I think it was, it really might have gone on for two hours. There was so much information, and, mm. you know, I, we've been asked a lot about that, and it was maybe one of the first times we'd been able to provide this information resource, which was great. I believe he'll come back for the health fair that we're planning for October, but it was good, and there is a follow-up. Um, in June with someone else who is going to talk more about uh, about devices and equipment, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that is in our current newsletter, if you hadn't seen that. The trail walking group is really, uh, I think, successful and led um, by at least one volunteer, Janet, and maybe several, but um, it's it's been great. They've gone to a different place every week for the last four weeks. Mm -hmm. And despite the weather, I think they somehow have fit those in. Um, uh, and, you know, for the volunteer luncheon, just so you uh, luncheon or celebration, we have it paid for through the formula grant. Um, and because of that, there is somewhat of a guideline that we invite people who've spent so many hours volunteering for the senior center. So based on my senior center's calculations, when people scan in as volunteers, which I may have mentioned last month, so sometimes we have to extrapolate because we know it's not necessarily being done and all board members, you know, we put all those hours in, but it's possible sometimes we miss people, but we do have to sort of draw a line and make a distinction between, you know, a couple of one-time things and ongoing volunteer support. So just mentioning that um, as you look at the back of Lisa's report where she does talk about the hours spent on certain of the roles that we have volunteers mm -hmm. play. So, just in case anybody asks, that sometimes we, we do draw the line. It was 10 hours, but we make, you know, <laughs> loose 10 hours. Um, moving on to our transportation report. Um, I think it's a good looking report. Jean provides telling us what the categories are for the rides that are provided. Our numbers are you know, up again, 600 versus April, which was less than 500. So, I mean, it is consistent that it's being used. Um, and again, fairly consistent with the year prior as well. Is that not? I think we skipped over Jenny's, that's fine. Oh, I put it in the wrong order, I guess. Oh, sorry, well, they're on the back. It's just on the back. Sorry. Um, but since I've started, I'll keep going. And we have had a few van issues this oh, month. So okay. it's actually been a, because um, <laughs> we didn't have the 14 person van. And then we have the two that are smaller, which are older, 2008 and 2012. One failed inspection. Oh, no. <laughs> one failed inspection. Out of that one for a couple weeks. Then. Oh. It's back. And actually getting it repaired has been um, something of an odyssey just because it's difficult to sometimes fit it in and only we usually go to O'Brien's with it, the ones we own. Now, if it's the Gatra van, we have to go to Taunton with it, which that was oh. another issue. Yeah. So between getting the drivers, you know, up and running, trained or scheduled and not having and actually down to one van. So what happened? Um, well, we did do the charter that I think some of you knew about for a trip last month, which worked out well. And we could do that again if we had the numbers. The MFA, it figures. I had decided, yeah, we have two vans, and we have dri two, we have the new driver, let's let both vans go to the MFA, and then it didn't pass inspection. <laughs> so not to disappoint the people we had just told they could now go from the wait list, we ended up renting, basically renting the services of Social Community Action Council to be the second van along with our smaller one. So it worked out, you know, nobody minded terribly that it was a different van, and I think it was still comfortable enough, but anyway. 
So we've punted a couple of times, um, and actually transportation requests are already kicking in, so it seems like the summer has arrived because we're getting a lot of calls from the Hummer Rock area, yes. which is always also a challenge in terms mm. of timing for our vans and van drivers. But, um, and of course, nice to have Jean present at our meeting tonight, um, just to hear what's going on with us. But if anybody has any questions for her, uh, specific to transportation. <laughs> but otherwise, she's doing a great job. We're happy to have her. I'm glad she's still with us. Well, Jean, a couple okay. of people that I know, a couple of seniors mm -hmm. told me that they spoke with you. Mm -hmm. um, and that they specifically said, and that Jean is mm -hmm. so nice. Oh. So I'm just passing on, <laughs> you. Nice. you know, you. I, I, I see a lot of seniors all day long every day, and I, I thought you'd like to hear that. Oh, thank you. That gene nice is so nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to hear. Yeah. I actually had a patient in my office today who said the same thing, so oh, awesome. you have to be complimented. Oh, thank, thank, thank you. you for. Thank you. Nice. So we're going to change the name from Jean nice. to that gene. <laughs> <laughs> that girl. Very on nice. the queue for a long time, so I'd rather, I don't the know. Other Q, I know. Uh, I know. The other queue, I know. We thought I know. Love queue, but yep, yeah. we like that team. Right. <coughs> okay, and then I'm sorry, so thanks. Um, yeah, great customer service. So back to Jenny's. Sorry, I skipped over that, but um, she gives you her numbers again as usual, and I did think um, just in terms of some of her categories, Maybe I could explain a little bit, like advocacy. You know, sh some of them are self-explanatory, food assistance, mm -hmm. Medicare, Mass Health, and that's all. Mostly she's assisting here in the office, sometimes by phone. But advocacy. Um, she makes calls on behalf of clients sometimes. They might even be in her office saying, you know, they're, they're having a hard time sort of communicating their need or finding the resource that they need to talk to. Or they may be on the phone and she even does a three-way conference call. Um, she often does call social elder services on behalf of clients who may need some services and you know aren't um, able to communicate that on their own. Emergency needs always. She did um, accompany a client to an appointment. It was um, necessary for them to get the information they needed and it was just something we decided we could do. Um, pension program benefits mediation. You know, people say, you know, I think that this is what I should be receiving and I don't know why I'm not receiving it and so then she talks with the employer on their behalf. Um, she's even been negotiating some senior discounts for services if, you know, they're willing. I mean, it never hurts to ask type sure. thing. Um, those that hadn't been able to afford it. Um, protecting others against services being cut. She's appealed or with supporting documentation about that for others. Um, represented a senior with their adult child who, again, was just unable to get their point across as easily as, you know, maybe someone else could for them. Um, oh, I she did help a client who had been being charged for something that they shouldn't have been charged for through their medical insurance because they had a supplement that the original invoicer didn't know about and they, she saved them hundreds of dollars for that. Okay. So those are, that's advocacy, I guess. So when it's that broad, but that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. And then general information, of course, clients call about all kinds of things. Could be the lawn and yard services that we might refer them to launch for, just because that happens to be the contact we're using these days. If they can pay something, they will receive an assessment once they come visit. And if, if launch thinks they can do the service and the people can pay, which is generally under market, I'm quite sure, then, then that's what we do. Um, you know, Meals on Wheels, we get a lot of calls about that, and we, of course, have to refer them to social elder services because we don't do them ourselves. And it's, it's a shame, of course. We'd like to. And even the volunteers are their volunteers and not our volunteers. So, again, we just have to refer them right out. So hopefully that might change at some time. Um, otherwise, 73 interactions for Jenny, and she does do some other out-of-house things. She is going to the housing authorities, uh, but I'm not sure how many people she's really seen there. Um, so I'd like to think that maybe some others would become aware of that and take advantage of her visits because she's there for an hour and you know could talk about him. And that is it for reports. How I did on time. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to Joan, South Shore Elder Services. Uh, the South Shore Elder Services meeting was on Tuesday, June sixth. Uh, we were given quite a bit of material for mass home health. There's a lot of changes that are going on regularly. 
there are very, uh, a lot of concerns over cuts for home care services. The state is still working on their budgets. Many concerns over the current bill for health care. Costs will go up for people age 50 and older. And we had a lot of, a lot of stuff on that. But I think that's something with the way But the AARP has had, had several articles about um, their concerns um, and how expensive it is. That it's going to be for older people, especially, and other people are not going to have coverage. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a wait and see. Yeah. Don't know what That's right. right. Mm -hmm. It's a moving target. Mm -hmm. There's a very good relationship with the veterans. Um, and I'll read, this is, a, this is from the veterans. Congratulations on successfully complete, completing your programmatic and financial management services readiness review for the Veterans Directed Home and Community Based Services Program. We appreciate all the time and effort you put into the development of your program materials and discussing your plans for programs. South Shore Elder Services approved to serve veterans through the home care. South Shore will be joining a network of other agencies, programs across the nation who are serving dedicated veterans and supporting the desire to live in the community as independently as possible. That's trying to keep them at home. Mm -hmm. And so they're really tied up with, um, with the veterans on that. And in fact, we've got a new board member and he is the veteran, the veteran agent in Cohasset. Oh. So that should be interesting. What's his name? I don't, oh, I don't. Sorry. He wasn't there, I didn't get oh, his okay. name. Oh, that's okay. But he is, a, he is a veteran agent for Cohasset, so he's going to represent Cohasset, because mm -hmm. every town is represented. Uh, the most important thing that we had at the meeting is uh, protective uh, service programs has changed. And we were given a lot of material on this. Read so what is new? July 1st, reports for elder abuse will be taken at U.S. Mass, which is this telephone number. <coughs> so if there's someone who has, if they're worried about protective services or someone is being abused or something, they don't call South Shore Elder Services anymore. They call, call this number. The intake how hotline. Know, how do you know to get the number? Well, that's. It's going to be here, posted here. And I and I gave a copy to. Oh, I do have. And she'll probably, she'll probably be she'll probably be hearing more about it. Is also. it a separate group? It's for Mass Health. Oh, oh, okay. The intake hotline will operate 24 hours a day, seven days per week, without interruption. Good. Wow, that's great. Yeah. What stays the same? The elder abuse hotline telephone number. They still will have it, but then they would refer it. All investigations, screening activities, service planning, and support remain at South Shore Elder Service. So we'll go to this number, and they, different agencies, they will send it to. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. and, it, and South Shore Elder is one of them. But I mean, it's just the, the whole new. So this is the jumping off point right here. By the person who's being abused? Yep. Or their the family member yeah. who sees them getting abused? Yeah. So we should have these all over the place, right? I mean, well, all this, this has just come out. Oh, okay. This but I mean, yeah, out. I mean, that's... But it's effective July 1st? First. Joan. Joan. Is it uh, effective July 1st? It's effective now. Yes, yes. That's only a couple of weeks away. Mm -hmm. Well, as of June first, and centralized intakes will begin with the new post, June June thirtieth. Yeah. We'll begin with the new provider, U.S. Mass Medical School Call Center, is what it's called. Mm-hmm. And that, they said this was very important, and that's what I, I got mm. copies from it because they do want this to get out. 
Yeah, they, they should be posted at all the John, why don't you read, read the number for the, uh, mm -hmm. the TV okay. audience? The number is 1-800-922-2275. So, like, if they did call South Shelby City, they would tell me about this number. Mm -hmm. the, okay. the whole... The whole protective system has has changed, and you know we had problems with one of the people here, mm. and there's been others. So I think that's what they've really looked into this and mm -hmm. been discussing it. So it's a whole new change. Mm -hmm. If anyone wants to look at this, just can. This is this is like a slide presentation. <coughs> Each page shows you know where they operate from and that. But that the most important thing is the number. The number, yep. yeah. Okay. And the board training was given on home care overview by Bobby Kay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the goal of the management intervention is to maintain an independent living in the community by assessing and monitoring an elder support system. There's a couple of pages. I'm just reading the most important. South Shore LD Services case managers works with staff members of community agencies such as Council on Aging, Housing Authorities, and other community agencies. Case managers see their clients two times per year with intimate telephone calls on a quarterly basis, networking in an important company to their job, communications with outreach coordinators, and provide agency assistance in the management of the client's care plans. This is just a little bit to tell you what it is. The home care program is a state-sponsored program that provides case management and home care services to fixed income elders who have functional needs. It provides this help at a very reasonable cost, which is determined by a state-established co-pay schedule. Services are arranged through contacted provided agencies and include personal emergency response system, personal care, help with showering and things like that, homemaking, assistant with laundry, shopping and meal preparation, and transportation for medical appointment purposes. Service plans may also include attendance at adult day care or behavior health counseling. The state home care program offers services to residents who are age 60 or older and who's qualified based on income and unmet needs for services. Consumers who are under age 60 with a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or a related dementia and have a caregiver and need a respite services may also be eligible. Our goal is to assist consumers to remain as independent as possible for as long as possible. So they do a co-pay. So if you know, if they don't have much money, they don't have to pay much copay. But if you have a lot of money, it's a sliding scale, probably. Yeah, you can still do it. I mean, you, it could be like you would have to have a hundred percent copay if you had a lot of money. But the thing is, the service is available. Mm -hmm. It all depends on, on your income. It's a safe, safe service. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what I want to read about ARP is calling what the House passed the AIDS tax. If Congress is going to be tinkering with health care coverage, they should be focusing on ways to make sure that costs go down rather than up. The results of what the House passed are really very clear. People lose coverage. Fewer people will have coverage. The people who have coverage will be paying more for premiums. While the fate of the American Health Care Act is uncertain in the Senate, opponents warn the current House version could leave folks over 50 facing an age tax. That, that was mm -hmm. Upcoming dates, they have the volunteer luncheon for the workers, I think, two years ago, and that's June 21st. And we still need volunteers for, you know, I do four days a week now. 
mm. which ties me up from one o'clock and um, from nine to one. So that's why I can't be here. It's the same. Thing. And it's we the need same help thing. in the kitchen as well as, as drivers. And the picnic. John, is that a, it's a nine to one commitment. Mm -hmm. Well, we we do meals on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So we have Sit to down. prepare the baggage and stuff, everything that goes <coughs> out. Right. And sometimes I have to drive because we don't have drivers. And then the luncheon is at noon time to one. So we also do that. So if somebody was to so we get sixteen, like fourteen to sixteen people that come now and have the meals on wheels, but we make it nice for them. It's heated, you know. So set up for them. Okay. And anybody, and, you know, they can come to that. Any seniors can come to us. Thing is, when we deliver meals, it should be people who get out or can't prepare meals. Like, I know one lady, she can drive, but she can't stand for a period of time. So mm -hmm. She can't stand and prepare a meal. Right. Mm -hmm. So if they can get out, we have, we can, the mm -hmm. van will take people to the meal, and people, and so other people can still drive. So that's what that's for, is to encourage people to, if they can get out. To get out, okay. Do it, you know. But the volunteer commitment is both to assist in the sit-down, congregate lunch, right. and serve, but you can prepare and serve, or to do the, the yeah, driving for the both. Meals on Wheels. Okay. Well, see, in the, in, in the morning when I go at 9, I have to prepare the bags and everything for the meals that go out. Right. And then the, the drivers usually come about 10.30. How many go out? Well, we get, well it's going down a little bit in numbers. And it, it's... When it gets warmer, I think, you know, family around. But I, we get between, mm. I think right now it's between 45 and 50. You can go up more. Wow. And we have four routes, mm -hmm. including home mm -hmm. But when you say 45 to 50, is that for the whole week? Not each, in, day. Each, day. each day. Each day. Divided each by four. Day. Three days a week. Yeah. Divided so by four drivers. That's a, that is a lot. That's high. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Dennis did it for That's only for the meals for people. My brother Dennis did for you. Oh, okay. Because Thursday they're at the Congo church. So the only day they don't have a meal to go to was on Tuesday. That is the need we were thinking of trying to fill. I mean, ideally, you know, we'd like to have lunch here. We'd like to have them here doing lunch every day. We'd love to have those seniors here. But we haven't been able to. But if Tuesday is the whole and we can figure out how to do yeah. that, we would do that. When we have our new center. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yes. needless to say. Yeah. But. but they might die of starvation before that. I'm going to make sure that won't happen. Bad Dale. Bad Dale. <laughs> so the, the, the picnic, to remind you, the picnic date is going to be Bad August 17th which is a Thursday. And St. Luke's is having their dinner. What are you having? We're having chicken with noodles, green beans, salad and rolls, and strawberry shortcake. Oh, wow. Come for the shortcake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Joan. And uh, South Shirley Services doesn't meet in July. So I won't have a report in July. Okay. okay. Thanks, Joan. Good report. Did you have a bank time, Joan? Sure. <laughs> Elaine? Yeah, um, due to the calendar, the Commission of Disabilities is oh, meeting does, next week. Right, this is a <laughs> quick Thursday. Yeah. 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 Um, but we have been working um, with um, the Town Planning Board and um, the Town ADA Coordinator on directional signs that they're planning on putting up throughout the harbor um, to make sure that they're ADA compliant. Um, we are continuing to work on our um, development of the forum that we're planning on October, November timeframe. Um, and developing a functional accessibility form for the um, fire department to utilize so that they will know what is needed when they go mm -hmm. out for an emergency mm -hmm. or an evacuation or whatever. Like. That's good. Uh, and we're still going to hopefully meet with somebody here to do a self-evaluation. Better schedule that. I know. Um, <laughs> that was a reminder. The weeks go by. And that, that's fine. Okay. Betty. Questions accepted. Okay. I have a question. Sure. You mentioned that the sidewalks until the road did not meet. Right. Who's in charge? Does anybody know? Well, the the um the correct the back. Would you like to speak to this, John? 
question. He would be better to speak to it, but they have, they, the town has, the question was the sidewalks on Tilden Road. They, they just, have, they just made sidewalks on Tilden, on Tilden Road. They have worked on developing curb cuts across Tilden to the, uh, to, you know, on Beaver, at the, the Beaver, Beaver Dam Dan, Beaver intersection. Dan, right. They have done that. They have not yet done anything with the sidewalks. No, they haven't completed them. There are still issues with the telephone calls, the cable from yeah. the other side. That's right. As a matter of fact, I'm sharing a letter to this document and that's what we're doing. About the cable issues, we'll make this complaint and that it's at least 90 inches up. We'll go right down and come down as opposed to a 45-year-old one. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, but they did do something. They did um, work on that intersection to yes. to provide a, a curb cut. Uh, I it didn't look it didn't look appropriate to me. So, but I shouldn't say that. So, John, you, what, have you seen the curb cut that they've done? They put in. Okay. I'm sorry. This John has more expertise in this than I do. So when the law comes in, they're modified in a year or two. They're protected by the grandfather clause, which is four feet wide. Mm -hmm. So they just, they finally fixed it so far right now. That's extending to the roadway, the sidewalk going further down, until they repair the road, okay. the sidewalk, they don't protect it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. But they were required to do that by the, by the end of June. Mm -hmm. so. You know, I, I hope Elaine and, and John are around long enough to see a lot of these issues resolved. And because of your, you know, helping make us aware of some of our issues here, I'm noticing things now around town myself. <laughs> you know. yeah, between Jericho Road, if you're heading west out of Citra, between Jericho Road and Tilden, I think every telephone pole is in the middle of the sidewalk right. yes. on that entire stretch. And I, that's probably just one example of that in town. So yeah. well, I, I, I hope we, we, we can come to some you know, resolution on, the, on these issues uh, as time goes on. But it seems like it's a monumental mm -hmm. task to, a to bring. So driving through other towns, yeah. we are not unique. No. No, we'll just put in a lot of new sidewalks mm -hmm. with telephone mm -hmm. poles in the middle. Mm -hmm. And Duxbury did it too, to, just to it, get the sidewalks in, but there's mailboxes uh, and phone poles. Right. It, it's just because um, yeah. there, there wasn't enough. It's from. not yeah. being. Well, so I was looking at when I drove up Beaver Dam, I guess. Yeah, Beaver Dam. So where could they put these poles? They would have to put them on private property, well, I guess. Put the wires underground. Or put the wires underground, oh, right? Okay. Which yeah. is probably a more logical. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're too expensive. Oh. They were going to do it on Beale Place because of the condo that they had. Mm -hmm. He wanted, he wanted it done on the ground, and utilities company said it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, the way the law goes, it starts from the road itself, so the center line mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. right about top of that. Now most communities want to have the center line that we for time, we put for kind of park, and some people want even a bike trail beside that. And right. then the sidewalk on the side. Mm -hmm. You only have so much you can deal with mm -hmm. in the middle. Mm -hmm. So a lot of communities like ours have sidewalks on one side of the road. That's why in Tilden, you'll see curb catch you go down like fifteen houses and then you cross the street. Pick up that sidewalk, go across yeah. <laughs> the back, pick up that path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. okay. Well, they're more aware of it anyway. Yeah. They are. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Un yeah. Unfortunately, it has required um, complaints being written that to make the, the, the change be it happen. So. Mm -hmm. so, do the utilities bear any responsibility <laughs> yes, as well as the town to yes. resource? And try to resolve those issues? It comes down to utilities on the pole, and they're supposed to put them, make them compliant. Mm -hmm. If they're already there, the town is supposed to say, listen, if it's already in the first place, we're going to keep it there. If we're doing the road over, we say, you move now and so on. It just has not been in sync. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, moving on to almost on time uh, to <laughs> the board the board business. I know Linda you know, has some things. Oh, Betty. Oh, Betty. Uh, oh, Betty. I'm almost sorry. Time, but Betty first. <laughs> golf, 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 you, you golf. Have, you have 30 seconds. The, friend, no. <laughs> the friends of Situate Seniors, it, their golf tournament is a week from tomorrow, June 16th, 8:30 a.m. There are still some spaces available. Um, if anybody here at this meeting knows anyone that might be interested. Um, I have a couple of forms here. I don't know if there may be some holes, sponsorships still available. I'm not sure about that. But I know I there are spaces for more golfers. And it's uh, June 16th, 8.30 a.m. The weather we report is for sun. The weather is going to oh, be perfect. Tonight. It is, but they, they're reporting it 10 days out. It's They're reporting it's going to be 71 degrees. To, anyone interested in signing up, even at the last minute, should contact anyone, any member of FOSS, and we will get them um, a sign-up form. We will deliver it to their home. And there's a dinner? Is there, there is a luncheon included, yes. And, and Audrey and will, will be, be there taking bets. And Audrey will. will be there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we will all be there. <laughs> um, Betty, I'll take that flyer yeah, and I'll well. post it at the Citric Country Club Great. bulletin board. I've been meaning to ask you okay. for one to do that, but Good. we may pick up a few there. Excellent. <clears throat> okay. I think once they start seeing a promising weather forecast as opposed to that 40 degrees in rain. Well, last minute sign up. Okay, now, now we'll move on to the board that's business. So, Linda, do you want to? I think that's it, yeah. That's oh, I'm sorry. Cut right. you off, Betty. No, just checking. You're done? Mm -hmm. Okay. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. She did it in 30 seconds. Yeah, she did. That was very good. That's a gold star. Um, you turn it around. This is a little loose, so you know what, I'm going to pass around on each side first. I have a, a couple of just informational handouts to help me, I guess, explain this. Oh, wait a minute. I, no. I gave you page one, page five, let me think, six point one. You know what, this is really the one you need for six point one. I only wanted to show... At page three, is that... This is the, the Council on Aging bylaws as... Do you have one? So this is current. I, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can share. And I yeah. can have one here. Joan and you guys down there want one. So there's actually four pages. It's it's two sided. And I'm sorry to see my. I should have stapled those. I I forgot. So it's two sided. And I've actually I think handed these out before. But that's the three. You said just five was important, right? Right, really, unless you want the whole thing just to have for your purposes for, for now. No. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but. Yes, yeah, I could have sworn I did that. So 6.1, if you can find that on page 5, it simply talks about, and that's the only reason I'm bringing this up, we know we, we have a chairperson, a vice chair, we don't need a treasurer, and we have a secretary of the council. Officers shall, officers shall be elected at or after the start of the town's fiscal year, which would be July, our July mm -hmm. meeting, which we did this past year, and shall take office upon election for one year in July, um, and then in the event of a vacancy. So I had put on the agenda, you know, after talking with J.D. and after talking last week with everybody that um, we could potentially make nominations, but um, not necessarily sure if people wanted to do it now and then vote in July or do it together. So to that point, sorry, just sort of educating myself as well as, you know, hoping to help just to make this an easier process. So there's one, two, three, four, yep. five, six. Um, so this I simply printed, you know, where we get all our really good information off the internet. <laughs> um, but oh, it is actually a Robert's Rules of Order about how you can proceed with nominations and you know last year we just offered and voted and that's fine but because we've also been talking about committees and the potential is there for a nominating committee and what that can do is sometimes help if they meet you know if they meet even just once a year but have ideas for who possibly in the community would be would be good to invite mm -hmm. to see if there was interest in the board itself and or you know they would make the nominations for the officers and then 
bring it to the board and then the board would vote. So that's one idea that's mentioned here by a nominating committee in addition to the way we have done it which is by the floor which means somebody just says I nominate and then the board votes on each successive officer. Nomination voting, nomination voting, nomination voting. So I just wanted you to have this. I only printed really, you know, the first couple of pages or I guess four front and back of that. Um, so that's just me sort of giving you some information to maybe help you decide which should be the case if we wanted to move forward and make it, you know, um, a little more standardized. And with Janice having last month offered to review the bylaws and look at them, I also have updated that uh, committee assignment handout. <laughs> So, you have lots of paper. Next month, I am showing up with binders for all of you, I promise. Um, but, you know, J.D. had suggested, and of course he was right, to maybe put a little bit more of an idea of what the committees might entail if you wanted to be on them. Um, and not that I could really say easily what the commitment would be, but for instance, someone on the nominating committee has a less of a commitment time-wise I'm just telling me if you still need them and I'll continue to pass them. Um, so again, these are suggestions based on my experience or, or you know, that of other um, COAs. Now, do we have any people that are being considered for um, a board, a board, yeah. a board member? Board members. I have not okay. heard, and all we know is that Audrey has um, stepped down, uh -huh. sadly, for the remainder of her term. So someone would have a spot should they have applied to the Board of Selectmen officially yeah. with the form, mm -hmm. which I'm not, I haven't heard. Mm. And I'm only assuming maybe that you, Lucille and JD, are up, are, um, you know, because we're able to have you on for two terms, yeah. two, three-year terms, but your terms are up, and I right. think JD had to contact you all about doing that. Yeah. So we we have one spot, is what I. And do we and along. if we fill that position, though, do we have a full complement of of uh, members? Or was it nine? Back to nine. Nine, right? Yeah. And the bylaws I handed out um, do say. They do say, and so that's where we came to the nine. We're considered under the town of situate charter or bylaws. We're considered a nine member mm -hmm. overlapping um, board, one of those. Mm -hmm. So here in our bylaws under, um, I'll find it because I know it's right here. Um, anyway, it was as, as few as seven, as many as 11, but yeah, because right. it was stated as nine in mm -hmm. another document, we just, we, we went with the nine and mm -hmm. the Board of Selectmen approves the nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how it came to nine. Okay. Um, so that's why we have one spot. It would be, if I'm not mistaken, Audrey came on for your, let's say, second term, <laughs> what the, um, grandfathered term last year. So that would be a two-year uh, term for the person coming on to the board, I think, unless they can come on and now do another three-year term. But because it's supposed to be overlapping, and you three or three years, I'm not sure. I just think they have to fill the term uh -huh. as is. That's mm -hmm. what I think. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. <coughs> so, um, again, if everybody looked at the committee assignments, it's not really up to me. I'm kind of giving you this information and then you all can discuss and decide, you know, if, if you like the ideas of the committees. I'm mentioning the Long Range Planning Advisory as a committee that I have seen perform as just sort of a planning like I would work with the chair generally and have to, <coughs> to just form the agenda. What do you want, you know, what should we do? But, but an advisory committee might, might meet about that and say, you know, this is a direction, this is what we'd like to get involved in, this might be a good idea. Oh, you know. So that's that. Um, so a bigger commitment if you're meeting maybe twice monthly or at least every couple of months that way. Nominating, like I said, maybe only once, maybe twice. Finance, I, Leslie did offer to, I mean, and that might be with regard to, you know, my work with the budget or suggestions for resources or, you know, other, other ways to, to fund some things if we needed that. So, um, events, you know, planning the ad hoc, you know, as needed, planning for, you know, ideas for community awareness and support and advocacy and program needs. 
marketing, help with print and social media opportunities, which I could see being, you know, really helpful. <laughs> um, and then the bylaw review, which I'm sure Janice would like some, maybe some help. So maybe at least two per committee, but again, that's just my suggestion. So. Well, then you, you suggested this like a, right after we were hired, our first board meeting. I don't know if, you know, nothing ever came of it then, but if, if this is a new crew, maybe mm -hmm. jump on it. Well, I think it makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. It does make sense. Well, we did the subcommittees for our new senior center building. Well, yeah. Back, yeah. way back. Yeah. That worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys um, with your activities plans. But, you know, I mean, if this is all helpful to yeah. Linda and her staff to help well, move it gets, things along. Well, it gets uh, the board a little bit more involved yeah, in, in right. mm -hmm. more than just a meeting. Um, I think, you know, potentially helps you feel a little bit more <coughs> ownership for, mm -hmm. for the board itself mm -hmm. and what you're doing. Yeah. Um, uh, I like I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. people, other people care about it, but I think we, you know, okay. once we... So, between yeah, now and yeah. July, people yeah. could think about if mm -hmm. they don't want to, if they want to sign up now, I'll take names. <coughs> if you want to do mm -hmm. it in July, I will. Mm -hmm. So, so the only other point I'm going to make on that handout I gave you about the nominations and elections on page two, um, or page one to two, it says, sometimes nominations aren't taken until the election is pending, and sometimes they're taken at other times, such as at a meeting before the election meeting. Just mentioning that point, that here we are the month before we would sort of do the elections. And we did wait and discussed waiting last year because um, we would have the new members. We mm -hmm. thought that was right. important for that. Mm -hmm. Granted, we might only have one coming in, but so just wanted to make that So point. every year you elect a new chair? Well, that's chair. what it says here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we could extend that, make it two if we thought the consistency was better, but right now that's what's in the bylaws. And I think any changes, it's not the town of Situate bylaws, which they have a Council on Aging, you know, section, yeah. Yeah. but yes. I think we still yeah. need to review yeah. and, and get approval from the Board of Selectmen, so um, I think we'd submit yeah. that for review. Mm -hmm. I believe that's and how it works. do you have extra copies of uh, a full set of the old bylaws? I have sections and a full. I gave you the whole. I mean, yeah, but it, it's not as big as it. There's two pages, four sides. So that's it. So I think you have it. I have it. I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. three, yes. four, five, six. Yes. But I don't have my own three, four, five, six. What do you we have to we share this? this. Been, what do you need? Sorry, we have, we have pages that. between us. I did. Since I had forgotten to staple, I may not have given you the whole. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah. so, um, so anyway, okay. I also, as scheduled, just mentioning, and it doesn't matter, I won't be here in July because of I'm going on the Appalachian Service Project, so oh, I'll nice. not be having fun, but I will be, you will be, I will be away <laughs> in West Virginia. Nice. Um, so that's July. So either you have the meeting on the second. Thursday of July, which would be July 13th, or you know, mm -hmm. can always discuss not or postponing it to the 20th. But sometimes mm -hmm. they miss the, they don't they don't have that meeting in July. Oh, we July. already I we already missed a meeting. We are, we've already not had one meeting this year, and we supposed to have 11. No, we can have 10. Oh, we can have 10. Uh, we need written? to have as Where many is as. That written? It's in a bylaw. In a bylaw. For the weather, for the, you for the know, weather. I believe, or maybe it's weather somebody related. else's bylaw, but I know, but we've already missed a meeting because it was a weather related. Yeah, it was February, yeah. Yeah. but um, and I, I, I believe it's I, where 10. Is that written that we I, I can look I, for it, yeah. I don't I'd know, appreciate it. um, but we usually have not had the August meeting, not the July meeting. Oh, July meeting's August important meeting. because it's the beginning right. of the fiscal year, I unless we want to put that off, yeah. but we have, um. For the last two years, not men in August. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we have missed another meeting. I believe it's 10, so I'll have to find that. But could be in what's written for So, um, just to clarify. Yeah. yeah. We, we could <laughs> do luck. board elections today, tonight? We could, except you unless you wanted two, to two decide to do a nominating committee. Three people aren't here. Y yeah. So I, yeah. But we could have, and we could, you know, moving forward, do that. 
or we could do them in July and move the July meeting to the 20th so that yeah. well it doesn't and it, you know and I want to suggest it doesn't yeah. sort of matter that I'm here it you does know, for that it purpose it matters but, um, yeah yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, well, not for the vote or any well I think we that. should plan on doing it in as a July meeting then I, yeah. I guess and, that make and the, the, most, the, the most sense meeting, so that and maybe we'll have a new member and then here's the thought, it, just the thought that could be discussed or decided now by a vote is, do you want to have a nominating committee or do you want to do it by the floor? <coughs> that could be. So will Audrey be replaced by our July meeting? Yes. And so the, the selectmen already know this. Well, she will be position. if somebody applies. She well, that's what I mean. Do they know that there's a uh, I believe position? they know. I, I sent oh, my okay. resignation. But they should have potentially received in, you know, applicants potentially, right. even without knowing, and mm -hmm. now then they will know that they can interview right. those uh, who and may be like interested. Mm, yeah, I guess maybe we could encourage that, but you're right. Technically, we have a number that's sufficient, but we would ask that maybe they fill them. Right. We can always ask. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Um, so maybe I'll. Maybe I'll just make a note. Yeah, no, can we find I mean, out I'll if there have been any? Yeah. We can find yeah. I didn't think to ask. I wouldn't have wanted to ha ha has an announcement been put in, Linda, said, in, in like our no. newsletter or anything? No. The, the applications are available online. Uh -huh. yeah. You have to know to go to the Board of Selectmen's page yep. and look for the applications there, right. which <coughs> kind of is not intuitive if you're looking to apply for the Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. Well, Post. in the past two years, at least anyway, the past two years, they have put um, an ad in the paper on right. the Mariner, and they have had the open house yep. oh, yeah, right. uh, yeah. displaying the various boards and committees mm -hmm. for people who might mm -hmm. be interested. Yeah. And I would yeah. say that had been done in April the past two years, but mm -hmm. um, they didn't do that this year. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was in the paper, and somebody may have seen it. Mm -hmm. well, I, don't, I, I, I don't believe it's been in the paper yet. I think, Gordon, you put something on Situate Connect site. I'm about looking um, for a new member? About open positions. I, I may, I, I yeah, I may have. Yeah, I may have. Uh huh. And Janice, our, our, our now school committee member and secretary, she came to an open house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. how she. And she's yeah. staying on as secretary, mm -hmm. isn't she? Yes. Well, she's yeah. staying on as a board member. Mm -hmm. She's oh, right. She gets yeah, like to, you know, to, to write she, a book every month. Uh, yeah. <laughs> A book. <laughs> okay. Well, let's make it. We, we need uh, to make uh, a decision. Uh, I on think the July meeting, yeah. Time yeah. Is so the, I, I don't think that requires I'm not, a motion. I'm not sure that it, one member, one missing spot should be swaying everybody's. Right. No. no. Right. I mean, no. it's a concern, but I don't think it's a deciding factor as to what, what we decide. Think if we are missing tonight. Oh, we yeah. Tonight. Oh, yeah. Tonight. Not to do it tonight, but I think. Do we do a nominating committee or do you nominate? Elaine, Elaine, you're not on the board, Elaine. Shut me up. <laughs> they could be inside, but you're not Thank on the board. That's all right, conversation. It seems like it's always worked pretty well to nominate John, from the floor and my John involvement. Has a question or a comment? John, why not get a nominating committee working? Well, that's tonight. another. Gordon, John. next meeting. That's I'm going to present and vote. Your committee, are there prerequisites to be on the board? For example, you don't have you to be disabled yourself by having a direct feeling of like a spouse or a parent or a child. And if you have good moral character. <laughs> and over no, you don't well, they do be go before the Board of Selectmen who ask certain questions and the uh -huh. expectation mm -hmm. is that there is maybe some experience related to the mm -hmm. a aging yeah. <laughs> or, you know, health or, but I think it's not a prerequisite necessarily, it's just sometimes a guideline that they might use or maybe one would be selected if there were several over another because of some experience they had that they could bring to the board, which might be yeah. unique they have, or, or they have helpful. have a resume. I had a special, gerontological specialty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's something on that I think. Yeah. And I had worked for Mass Health for 12 years, and I had also volunteered at the Senior Center for like a year and a half before I even tried to become a board member. But at that time, at that time, I was the only one, I'm speaking for me, I don't know about Audrey, but way back then, I was the only one applying for that opening. There was, they were probably saying, take her, it's a, it's a human body. <laughs> but, but now, now there have been times when 
there are three or four people that are interested and they have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, and somebody yeah. is chosen over someone else, possibly because of their backgrounds, but not because of, you know, I don't know. But it's not a requirement. Yeah, yeah. There's, no, there's no requirement. Well, it se. does say in the bylaws, as they stand now from 1999, Article 4, um, uh, council membership shall reflect the makeup of the community at large and shall be composed of at least 51 percent over age 65. <laughs> well, I don't know if we stick to that, but also preference for appointment shall be given to persons with training or experience in nursing, gerontology, social work, education, psychology, wide contacts in the community among the older population. So that's pretty broad, but still, it does state it. Okay, so if, if, if we're talking about a nominating committee, obviously J.D., myself, and Janice are eliminated, right? We can't be on oh, the nominating nope, committee. Nope, you can nominate, nope, you can be on the nominating it's committee. Oh, okay. So what's, what's, the, what's the flavor? The people leaning toward a nominating committee or do it from the floor? I prefer to do it from the floor. Yeah, I think I we're going to do it always that way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, this happened. We, we did, did it last year like yeah. that, too. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Audrey, you're overruled. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, no, no. I'm just teasing you. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I don't think there's enough competitive factors involved here. You know, I, I you know, pe people are interested in a, in a key <clears throat> position, but, you know, I, I think from the floor is always work because it's, you know, we're an amiable, amicable group, you know. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's decide on July. Linda, what, what dates did you say would, would, would be possible for you? So like 20th, 20th would I The would 20th, be here, okay. Not the 13th. 20th is good. Okay. If okay. it's good. 20th is good? Yes. Yeah. No, it's not good. Janice is going on vacation, are you? Yeah. Oh. There, there's okay. a family here, 27th possibly. Well, I suppose it might not be terrible because then. Um, we may and then we're not going to meet in August, maybe? Probably. Possibly. We'd split the difference in the summer, I suppose. Do we still need to meet on Thursdays? Or is, that a, is, that a, <laughs> is there room for discussion on changing from Thursday to Wednesday? <laughs> Originally, we had changed because Linda taught CCD. Do you still teach that? Um, Wednesday's not, not I, good for The summer's not the issue. Wednesday's I play tennis, um, and you have rotary. That was it. Rotary, oh, yeah, rotary, 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 rotary. Yeah, I think why we want to keep the same time? night. Why do we move to the I don't care. We did try. Excuse me? Want to try with the 27th? Sure. Yes? Uh, yes, I'm okay with the 27th. I'm okay pretty good with that. All right, let's plan on the 27th. Oh, we need a bylaw expert. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Okay. Well, that was. Huh? That was great. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for. Um, I got. If we're on old business, I have old. I got a couple of things I want to mention. Um, the the July 11th meeting is going to be very very important. So we really have to have a good turnout for that. Uh, Trisha uh, Town Administrator had mentioned to me <coughs> that she thought it would be the safety complex. Maybe that's mm -hmm. going to be too small. Maybe now the library, which will be open at mm -hmm. that point, mm -hmm. it opens it, I think, officially on the June 12th. Well, June 12th is next is, week, yeah. Yeah, next be Monday. Open. And they have a you know, pretty sizable meeting room, apparently, so maybe she's thinking of that. Yeah. But it's going to be important for lots of people sure. to attend. Uh, for you know, obvious, obvious reasons. It will be important for us to find out the time the line, and location right. uh, well, so that we can start yeah. spreading. Well, if it's going to be a selectman's meeting, they're it typically is. at 6, 6.30. Well, it's either at 7, generally, yeah. unless they have a bigger agenda for whatever reason, then oh, they start right, at 6. Seven, yeah. So, yeah. usually it's 7. Yeah. It's well, it's but if that's different, well, it will be posted on the town website. to be determined right now. My point is, it's going to be publicized but I get an agenda every. And, and, and if it, you know, if I, if if it's seven o'clock time is not written in stone, there are some seniors that don't drive at night. And yeah, maybe we could put together some carpool. Except that you know. And, and it's light. So it's light so out. A meeting it's at five o'clock yeah. would be over by seven thirty. I, I, I don't eight. know that the they've never met at five. They work. They work. So they, 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 work, so they, they can. Do that. If you'd like, I when I get the the. Um, I get an email with the agenda in it. Yeah. I can send it to the board. Yeah, great. Yeah. Would it be possible to use well, a, a, a van, one of our vans, Linda? I don't think so. At night. Why not? Uh, 
I don't know. It just uh, this would be a special. This is not a. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Right. Maybe Gatra. We'll see. I don't. I don't know. Oh, yeah, oh, well, there you I go. was in one of our bands, the SEO bands. Or does that come under Gatra? Uh, how late no, it doesn't. Gatra it comes under us. Hmm? How late do they? Work? How late does Gatra run? I don't know, Lucille. How late does Gatra run? Gatra runs till mm. seven. Yeah, so uh, that's not going to yeah, work. Okay. I believe so. All right, two other quick things. Uh, mm -hmm. Get it, get us out by seven. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there there's going to be an election when John September sixteenth. Yeah. Sixteenth. So, I don't know if anyone is planning to do a candidates forum, but maybe Fo I, I don't think it would be appropriate for us to do it. But maybe the if Foss the would think is what? September September sixteenth. So maybe you guys can. Well, we had one um, oh, two years did? ago when Mara yeah, and. We did. Um, there were other candidates, of course, but Mara was My elected name. to that position. We had them come here, and there was a Q&A and presentation. It was very interesting and very um, yeah, it was And that would be us. open to the public? <coughs> yeah, yeah, that would be, that'd be great. great. That would be yeah, fine if we could, if we, yeah. I, uh, that, would, that was I terrific. Know. Yeah, okay. We had four, I think. Would you, we did have four at that time. Would you be able to televise it? Yep. Sure, I would think so. <laughs> yeah. All right, September. we got some time to think about that yeah. work on that. I don't I don't know whether any other entity is going to plan on having one but it was really maybe if we step forward and say we'd like to do one and we'll do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right one other thing um, and this I, I, I saw this information um, I forget where but uh, Marshfield you know which obviously built a center when Linda maybe 10 12 years ago uh, there's might have been 10 yeah they're in the process Nine of going ten. back to, 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 to their town meeting asking for a 10 million dollar addition. They, ba they basically want to double the size of their space. So they've re re relatively quickly found out that, and I know Marshall has grown a lot in population, probably has grown quicker than Situate, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure what their, I'm not sure what their population is now. I bet it's probably pushing 24, 25,000. Um, but, you know, so, so in some discussions I've had with people around town, I said, well, you know, maybe you could do with less do we want to be in the position where in five, six years from now we have to come Just back and say, again, right? you know, we want another uh, 8,000 square feet or something? So, you know, um, I think the no. two UMass study and the and the Durkee Brown study, you know, very cre credible uh, uh, studies that were done, basically you're talking 15,000 square feet. So I think to, to start to talk about less, I, I think we'd be cutting well, any less than 12,000 would be different, yeah. and Hanover yeah. is an example of that. But at the same time, you know, new building, hmm. I yeah. don't know where you draw the line as to what is right. acceptable and when you yeah. make a concession, but yeah. um, 14,000. Oh, excuse me? How big is the existing marsh? They're about 11,000. Yeah, a little over two, yeah, I think about 11, just under 12,000. Yeah. Duxbury was 12, hmm. 12, 5. But and 12 the years ago, the Marshfield wasn't thinking about the expansion from baby boomers. I don't have the figures in my head by now, but every day because of the baby boomers across America, not in situate, the, the, the senior population is growing. If we had a clock of, that showed that, like, does it does it 10,000 a day. Is it? 10,000 10, a day? Mm -hmm. So 12 years ago, my family was thinking like not. that. We no, have the opportunity to think like that. Yeah. Ah, okay. You know, I think we have a lot of good arguments. You know, in, in you know, that if we, if it, it, you know, certainly there are going to be people who are going to object if it was one dollar on the tax mm -hmm. bill. Yeah. You know, but I think we, you know, I think again we need to educate. We need, we need to continue mm -hmm. doing education and we do need between now and, yep. and and then. So when this site study is is made, you know, then at least we have a stepping off point. We know we know what our options are or our best option. I hope I hope they recommend the best option. Mm -hmm. um, so well, we don't. I, what do you, I, mm -hmm. I'll be interested to hear what they think the best option yeah, is. You know, yeah, because I right, don't, I don't right. really know. Yeah. So yeah, I think a lot of there'll be a lot of clarification that'll happen in the next. Month. I mean, there's opinions are a dime a dozen, which I'm hearing, you know, daily yeah. opinions. Oh, sure. But I will be interested in a professional yeah. opinion about the mm. situation. Right. Right. Preferred. Yeah. So that's all I had, unless somebody has anything else they want to bring up, or if not, I, I, I take I would just like to thank oh. everybody. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. So thank you, Audrey, for the past eight years. I think I'm moving because I think somebody else Wait, deserves a chance. Yeah. Well, I mean, we need to thank you. Yes, yeah. we do. 
it's been a very worthwhile experience. I've seen it since I've been on the board. We've had a lot of changes, all for the better. Mm -hmm. We haven't got a bigger space, but <coughs> we have more programs. We have more people coming. We've reached out. There was a, some feeling when I first came on. You've done such a good job in renovating where we are in our quarters. People are very um, ready to come and visit and check it out for themselves. And it's been very meaningful. And I've told Linda I'd be happy to stay on um, if the need arises as a consultant. You know. How many years I have so. you been on? I've been how many years? No kidding. Yes. Eight. 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 Well, the My person. secret is out. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever replaces you will have big shoes to fill, yes. and uh, you'll right. be, you'll be yes. missed. And uh, yes. we thank you for everything you've done. It's been a great ride. Yeah. For all your enthusiasm and never giving well, up. I mean, that's uh, the motto: don't give up and don't give in. Right. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Don't give up. Well, you've been a so great leader. just have to go around with obstacles. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Thank you, Audrey. Yeah. Yay. We know where you live, Audrey. I was saying, but you're not moving, right? Uh, you're not moving. Can we have 50 years? Uh, <laughs> all right. Thank you all.